Hello everyone, welcome to today's Gatling webinar. Now I know that most of you are used to the fantastic webinars normally delivered by Stefan, but I'm delighted that Gatling have asked me here today to present my first webinar for Gatling. So I'm hoping that I can provide a slightly different insight and perspective to Gatling as someone who has used the tool over many years, but without being an actual direct employee of Gatling. So before we begin, uh, just a little bit about me quickly. My name is James, James Willett. Um, I'm a full stack developer for SAP. Um, so I'm based in the UK, just outside, just in Reading, which is just outside of London. Um, I have 12 years or so of experience in software development and testing. So I started off as a manual tester and then progressed into more of a automation performance tests kind of role, and then eventually transitioned again into a full stack developer role. But I still do a lot of stress testing, a lot of work with tools like Gatling as well. So I have a fair bit of experience. So in terms of the webinar for today, um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at um, a comparison between the open source version of Gatling with Frontline. Um, so we're going to just execute a simple Gatling test with the open source version of the tool. We'll then talk about the limitations of that test or some of the limitations of just running with open source. And then we'll see how running with Frontline addresses some of those issues. So in terms of the application that we're going to be testing against today, we're going to test against a video game database. This is a fictional database of video games. So it's just a simple API application that I built myself with Java, with Java Spring Boot. Um, I host it in the cloud on AWS, and I actually use this application to teach a few of my other courses online. Um, so the good thing about it is that it supports sort of the normal CRUD functions, um, so get, post, put, delete, etc., and it supports XML and JSON as well. So the API is just documented in Swagger here. So we see if we just call this get endpoints, uh, it will just return this list of video games, which you can see here. We call this post endpoint, we could create a new video game. So it's a very, very simple application. The application is not too important. I just wanted to show you it just to give you a little bit of context. That's the application that we're going to be using. Um, in terms of the Gatling script, again, the script itself, it's also quite straightforward. So just in the next few slides, I'm just going to show a high level overview of the script basically and, what, and how it works. So with our Gatling script, we set up the HTTP conf at first, and I'm also specifying a header. So it's like I send the header, accept application JSON with every call. Um, one slightly interesting thing about the script is that it's configured to use runtime parameters. So here I've set up runtime parameters for the user count, the ramp duration, and the test duration. So what this means is that I can feed in those parameters at runtime, and then they, those can be fed into the test. So if I wanted to run the test with a different number of users, you could put that in on the command line, as we'll see in the moment. In terms of the scenario itself, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a very simple scenario. So it's just going to call the three different endpoints. So it's just going to call this endpoint here to get all of the games. It will then call this post endpoint to create a new game, and then this get endpoint here to view the game that it just created. So very, very simple, uh, very, very simple script. The uh, logic behind those calls is abstracted away into methods here just to make the script a little bit cleaner, but it is, it's very, very straightforward. In terms of the setup of the load simulation itself, so we actually ramp the users again, and we use these runtime parameters that we specify here. So we say ramp users, user count. So if we don't provide in a number, if we don't provide in this property, we just default here. So in this case, it would default to three users, and then it would ramp up over 10 seconds. Um, we're also using max duration in this scenario as well. So what will happen is that the scenario will just loop for a, for a specified period of time. And then the test will finish once the max duration expires, in this case, 60 seconds. In terms of the architecture for the test, it couldn't be more straightforward. I'm just running Gatling on my local, she local machine, and then the video game database is hosted on AWS. So if I jump over now to a terminal, so I can literally just run um, the Gatling test. So I'm using the Gatling Maven plugin here. I'm specifying that I want to run this test script and then I've specified that I want to run 10 users with a five second ramp up and then run the test for 30 seconds in total. So with Gatling open source, once we start to run this test, as we, as you're probably aware if you've used the tool before, every five seconds, Gatling will print out to the console 
some details on how the test is going. So it will break down the requests by the request type. So here we have get all video games, post new game, etc. We can see the number of users are waiting, the number of users that are active, etc. Once the test is finished, um, Gatling will print out then a summary report. So we get a bit of information here on the response time, percentile breakdowns. And of course, Gatling will then generate the test report for us as well. So if I just jump over to here, so this test report gets generated on my local machine. And this is the Gatling test report that we'll be familiar with. So we can see things like the active users, the response time distribution, percentiles, et cetera. So that's all that's all really good and that's that's really useful and that's what we're used to when when it comes to using uh, Gatling. I'll just jump back to my slides. But if we were to take our load testing to the next level, just using the open source version has some limitations that we'll kind of we'll discuss a bit more now. So the first most obvious one is the source of traffic. So my application is hosted on the web. Chances are all of my traffic is not just going to come from my one machine like it did in this load test. If you've got an application hosted online, the traffic's going to probably come from all over the place. And even if it's not hosted facing the web, it's probably going to have different sources of traffic that it's going to come from. So for an accurate, realistic load test, you need to have multiple sources of traffic. With open source, that's very difficult to do. Um, as well, there's only a single load injector. So Gatling's obviously famous for being able to generate um, tons of load on a single instance, but there's going to come a point where you're going to need multiple injectors where you want to run larger scale tests. Again, with open source, that's very difficult. With frontline, it's very straightforward. In terms of the reporting, so with open source, we get the messages printed out every five seconds, and then we get our test report at the end. But to see that test report, we have to wait for the test to finish. We can't see that test report in real time. That report only gets compiled when the test is finished. It would be nice to be able to see that report in real time. Um, in terms of the result storage, so all of the results are just stored on my local machine. So if I want to share that report with the rest of my team, I have to go and physically send it to them or put it somewhere where they can access it. It's only available on my physical machine. In terms of the integrations as well, so with open source, it has integrations with the major build tools, such as Mavel, Graydon, SPT. Um, it has integration with Jenkins. But Frontline has integration with more tools. So it has integration with Bamboo, Team City, um, other, other um, build tools. It also has integrations uh, with public APIs as well. So if you wanted to build out a public dashboard um, with maybe your real-time results, you can do that with Frontline, whereas with open source, that isn't possible. So Frontline is the natural tool to progress when you want to take your load testing to the next level. When you come to use Frontline, there's essentially two different versions or flavors of it that you can use. So there's the on-premise version where you download the actual Gatling Frontline software, and then you can either install it on your own physical machines, or you can um, install it if you're running all of your architecture in the cloud behind a VPC, you can just install it on instances there. The other option that you have is just running Frontline in the cloud. So Frontline supports all of the major cloud providers, AWS, Google, et cetera. It's also possible to run Frontline on a Kubernetes environment, and it's also possible to run with OpenShift as well. So Frontline has you covered for all, all of the different providers here, essentially. For our demo today, we're just going to focus on using AWS. So we're going to use the AWS marketplace to provision a Frontline frontline instance management console and then use that to spawn our injectors as we'll see in a second. So in terms of the architecture for my frontline test, it's very straightforward again as well. So I have my frontline management console instance here um, in AWS. And when I go to run my Gatling test from there, it will spin up um, Gatling injectors in the cloud again for AWS. It will install Gatling on those. It will then execute the test against the video game DB. It will then collate all of those results from the different um, injectors and provide those results back to Frontline, as we'll see in a second. So if I jump over now to my AWS console, so if I refresh here, so here I have my Frontline. This is my Frontline management console that I um, provisioned earlier. So once this is provisioned on AWS, we can log in if we go to this public DNS address here. So I just go here and log in with the user that I created. So this is my user. So this is where I've set up 
set up the same the same sort of load test that we saw executed with the open source version. So if I just go through the steps very quickly, here I'm saying I want to execute this particular class, or this is the this is the test essentially the Gatling test script. So in terms of the test code itself, that lives in a GitHub repository. So I find that that's the easiest way is to just upload your test code into a Git repository. Frontline can then pull that down and then build the test from that. Um, from that itself. So if you wanted to, you could also uh, download a binary. You could put a binary of your test somewhere in either another repository or in AWS S3, but I find it's easiest to just do it through GitHub. Again, I'm doing this project through Maven, but you could also use Gradle or Scala build tool or some other custom build command if you want. But again, I'm just using uh, Maven here just to keep it as simple as possible. In terms of the pools, so these are the actual load injectors themselves. So here I've just created one simple pool called frontline test pool. I'm going to spawn three instances of that. So those are in the same geographical locations. And you could add in additional test pools. You could add in pools in other geographical locations, or you could add in pools with other cloud providers, etc. if you wanted to make a, a much larger scale test. But here I'm just going to use three instances from just the one test pool. In terms of the JVM options, I'm just keeping these as default, but you could add in JVM options here if you wished. In terms of the system properties, so a couple of properties that I'm putting in are the duration. So I'm saying that I want this test to run for 120 seconds, and I want this test to have 100 users. So again, these are the runtime parameters that we saw earlier on in our script. Uh, in terms of the time window as well, I forgot to say that's, I'm just leaving that as default, but you could add in some custom delay to the ramp up or ramp down there as well. So if I just go ahead and click start simulation, what will happen now is that Frontline will go away to AWS and it will um, spawn injectors for us. So if I jump over to the EC2 console, we can see here that um, Frontline is spinning up instances of the free injectors for us. So what happens is that Frontline will spin up these instances, it will install Gatling on all of them, it will then execute the tests. It will then collate all of the report of the, the results, combine them, give them back to Frontline. And then uh, Frontline Management Console will then tear down these instances as well. So these instances are only active and you're only being billed for when you're executing the test. So in this case, my test is only two, two minutes. So I would only expect to be billed for two or three minutes or so. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it takes about a minute or so for um, frontline to spawn the injectors and to install frontline on there. So you can see in the logs um, how frontline is getting on. So if I just look into the logs here and I can see all the injectors have started proceeding with the running. So Gatling is executing the load test now. Now the other great thing about frontline compared to open source is that we can view this report in real time. So even though this test has only been running for a few seconds, we can jump into the reporting right away. And what happens here is we get a breakdown again of the test report with um, all of the details of the load test. So we have details of the requests and responses, response time percentiles, errors per second, um, et cetera. The other great thing about Frontline compared to open source is that we have a lot more detail in our reports here. So there's a lot more metrics reported on. There's a lot more detail available for the user. So we can see here things like the arrival rate, the concurrent users. We have some details here on the connections as well. So we can see the open and close rate, the TCP connect duration, et cetera. Um, I'm not actually using TLS security in this test, but if we were using TLS, then you could see data on that reported on here as well. We have breakdown of DNS, um, breakdown of the bandwidth. And we also monitor the injectors as well. So if you're running a large scale test, you might get to a point where your injectors themselves become the bottleneck if they can't deal with the traffic that you're putting through them. But Frontline will monitor the injectors here so that you can see how, how they're performing as well. Um, another cool feature of Frontline is that we can add in comments to our chest. So you can just add comment a comment in here. here. So let's say investigate this later. So that comment will then go into the report and then that can be useful as a reminder or if you want to share something with the rest of the team, um, et cetera. That's a really, really handy way of doing that. Another great thing about Frontline is the ability to generate a public link. So we talked a bit earlier about how the test report only lives on my machine, but here we can just generate a public link like so. You can copy that. And then anyone with this link, they don't have to be a Frontline user or anything like that. They can literally just go to this link and then they can see a full breakdown, the full test report. So the same report that I can see as an engineer, we can send this to anyone like a stakeholder, et cetera. 
So this test was only due to run for two minutes and it's finished now. So if I jump over to my EC2 again, and we can see already those injectors are being shut down. So Frontline will tear down the injectors so they're only being built again while, while the test is active. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log in as a different user. So Frontline is very good when you want to collaborate with your team. So I've set up um, a different user here. Now this user doesn't have permission to run load tests. They only have permission to review the results. So if I come in here, I can look at my run history. And here I can see a breakdown of the tests that were run previously. So I could compare two tests here as well. I can see what the variations like between run seven and run eight, et cetera. Or I can just view, view the test report um, itself. So here, this is the same report that we saw previously. And again, I can see I have everything here. All of my run history is stored. So this is another great feature of Frontline in that you have all of your test results stored handily in one, one single place. If I just jump back over to the slides. So just to finish with, just as a, as a kind of summary, I just wanted to show a comparison between the open source and the Frontline version as taken from the Gatling website. So in terms of scripting, the scripting between open source and frontline is basically the same. So if you're thinking of moving from open source to frontline, you'll be able to use your test scripts. Pretty much everything is, is exactly the same. There's no difference in there. The big difference is in the execution. So whereas open source is typically only with one single injector, with frontline, you'll be able to use cloud-based injectors and you'll be able to execute Gatling in a distributed mode amongst many, many machines. It makes that so straightforward and that's you know, incredibly important and powerful for accurate load testing. We also saw with the reporting how much more detailed the frontline reporting is. We have access to live reporting. We can see a history of our test runs, comparison between our test runs, etc. So a lot of power around there. Frontline also supports a lot more integrations. So it has integrations with the other build tools like Bamboo and Team City, Grafana for um, data reporting for. Um, creating dashboards, et cetera. And the public APIs with Frontline are available as well. So you can even build out your own dashboards if you wish. We also have, of course, the management interface. We have the ability to create users with different permissions who can log in. We can share out public links. Um, we can make customized reports with titles and comments, et cetera, as we saw earlier. So a lot of very, very interesting and powerful features in Frontline compared to the open source version. So that was the main content that I had for the webinar today. Um, hopefully that was useful. Okay, thanks for your time today. Hopefully see you all soon. Thanks.